Hey everyone, welcome back to Weed, an unbiased, informative series where we discuss the social and scientific aspects of cannabis. Today is episode 3 where we're going to look at classification. So if you remember episode 2, we looked at plant anatomy to look at the different uses and differences of female, male and hermaphrodite plants, but we didn't really get into the differences between species type or chemovars. So this is what this video will do. This quote by Ethan Russo kind of says it all. The topic of cannabis carries controversy in every sphere of influence, whether politics, pharmacology, applied therapeutics, or even botanical taxonomy. So while we'll look at politics, pharmacology, and applied therapeutics later on, this video will look at botanical taxonomy and what that means. So what is taxonomy? Taxonomy is the naming and classification of all life based on the relationship to other species. So we've got that based on the morphology or the physical attributes and genetics. We also look at chemotaxy and the chemical composition of different cannabis based on cannabinoid and terpene content. Okie dokie, the taxonomic system at the moment is broken down into different levels of classification, beginning with the most basic or the difference between multicellular and singular cellular organisms. Then we come down into different kingdoms with animals, plants, fungi, protista, monera, or between three and eight different kingdoms, depending on who you're talking to. Cannabis is obviously a plant. Then the plants are broken down into 14 different phyla, including magnolia phyta or angiosperms or flowering plants, which cannabis is. Then we break it down a bit further from classes, orders, and families, which cannabis is in Cannabaceae. Cannabaceae has 11 different genuses underneath it, including Humulus, Cannabis, and Hackberry. Humulus has hops, or one of the plants responsible for beer. So it's cute to know that Humulus and Cannabis are cousins and, you know, that diverged 27.8 million years ago. Now is where the debate begins. Cannabis can either be split up into different species, sativa and indica, or sativa can be the only species with sativa and indica being subspecies. Underneath we have variety and then cultivar. Where did sativa and indica originate from? Well, this comes down to Linnaeus vs. Lamarck. Linnaeus was a famous botanical taxonomist and in 1753, he classified one species of cannabis, cannabis sativa, when he was looking at hemp type species. Lamarck, on the other hand, in 1785 said that there are in fact two different species, cannabis sativa from the west and cannabis indica from India, which he classed as a psychoactive type. Linnaeus hypothesized that cannabis sativa was from Persia, which is now Iran, and then dispersed through to Europe, while Lamarck believed that cannabis sativa was from Persia, while cannabis indica came from India. Fossil pollen studies show that cannabis sativa actually probably originated from the Tibetan Ridge in China. Some of the differences that Lamarck believed separated sativa from indica include height, branching, leaflets, inflorescences, seeds, aroma, phytochemistry, and stalks. So let's have a look at some of the differences between sativa and indica. Sativa usually grows taller to a height of 3 to 6 meters, while indica is usually shorter at 1 to 2 meters. There are also differences in leaflet morphology. Sativa's leaflets are bigger, lighter colored, and longer and thinner, while indica is smaller, darker colored, and thicker and stubbier. Coming to some phytochemical differences, sativa and indica have distinct terpene profiles, in other words, they smell different. We have sativa, which can smell fruity, floral or sour, and then we've got indica, which can be skunky, spicy, musty and earthy. These thanks to the differences in terpenoids, which we'll discuss later on. Then we come to the difference in cannabinoid content. For sativa, the original meaning of sativa was the hemp species with low THC and high CBD, while indica was the psychoactive species with high THC and high T CBD. Nowadays we have sativa which we say is high THC and lower CBD, but the traditional meaning of sativa was that hemp type and low THC. Despite the differences we have looked at, DNA differences do not warrant separate species statuses for sativa and indica. This is based on fixation tests where the comparison of DNA between sativa and indica is scored based on a number from 0 to 1. At 0 0.35, this is the threshold required to make separate species, so a score higher than 0 0.35 warrants a separate species. 
0.156 is the score between European and Asian human populations, which are obviously the same species. Then sativa and indica scored at 0.229, indicating that they are the same species. This means when we come to our classification, we have the genus cannabis, the species type sativa, then we have subspecies sativa and indica. Then below that we've got the variety of sativa, we've got the wild type ruderalis or spontanea and the domesticated sativa, as well as the domesticated indica and the wild type indica. From there we've got cultivars underneath. And now we've got another quote from Ethan Rosso. The sativa indica distinction is total nonsense and an exercise in futility. One cannot in any way currently guess the biochemical content of a given cannabis plant based on its height branching or leaf morphology. This is just saying that the whole indica sativa debate is kind of irrelevant. So that leads us to the next classification model, chemotaxi. The classification of cannabis based on cannabinoid composition. So we have type 1, which is drug type or marijuana. This is high THC and low CBD. Type 2 is intermediate type, which is moderate amounts of CBD and THC. And then type 3 or fiber type, such as hemp, is high, low THC and high CBD. Type 1 looks a lot like sativa or what we call sativa these days. Type 2 looks a lot like what we call indica and type 3 looks a lot like what we call hemp. So here we have hemp which you might have seen in lots of different products around the supermarket. Hemp is classified as 0.3 THC and contains CBD and other cannabinoids. Cannabis seed and hemp seed do not actually contain cannabinoids though. Just before we finish this video, this is a phytofact sheet which demonstrates the cannabinoid and terpene content of different cannabis species. We also have an aroma and flavor breakdown and entourage effects based on the terpene and cannabinoid content. This is super exciting and I can't wait to explain to you the different chemicals in the next part of the series. Thanks for watching another episode of Weed. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and follow and check out my website if you're interested in the subject as I have a lot of further information there. Thank you very much.